I want to ask you, has all three persons of the Trinity ever been seen together in the Old Testament? Yes. Wow. Now, what verse can I go to to see all three persons? Exodus 23, 20 to 23. I mentioned it earlier. So why don't you turn Exodus 23, 20, 23. Exodus 23, 20 to 23. Behold, I'm going to send an angel before you to keep you along the way and bring you into the place which I prepare, keep watch of yourself before him, listen to his voice, do not be rebellious toward him, for you will not pardon your transgression, since my name is in him, but if you truly listen to his voice and do all that I speak, then I'll be an enemy to your enemies, an adversary to your adversaries, for my angel will go before you and bring you in the land of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jezusites, I will annihilate them. Now notice, the one who's speaking is not the angel. So that means it's one person speaking, but the other is present. And then what I kept telling you, then he refers to the other one when he says, then he said to Moses, come up to Yahweh. He didn't say come up to me. You and Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel. So you have Yahweh telling Moses, come up to Yahweh, because the other one who's Yahweh is there. It's the angel. And that's confirmed by Stephen. I don't know what. That's what that that is. That's an actual angel, brother, a created being. Moses, no, verse 17, no, said, watch this. Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God. Notice that Moses is bringing the children of Israel to meet God. That's and he said, all of Mount Sinai smoked because Yahweh descended on it in fire. Now, I want to ask you, how many persons is descending upon Mount Sinai? Yahweh and his angel That's and the spirit. Can, can I, yes, I'm answering you. Don't tell me how to answer your question, dude. Take it easy. Your models, I know it's getting wrecked, but take it easy. Well, you, it's not getting I wrecked. just showed it to you. Oh, let me try. Maybe here. Uh, let me try it again. Maybe it wasn't clear. Here, I'm going to do it another time. The ones who came down in the cloud was Yahweh and the angel, and the spirit was filling Moses. Let's try it again. One more time. Take it easy. Exodus 14, 19 and 20 show you that. It wasn't Yahweh the Father alone. Let me give you the entire context. All right. So if you were listening, I'm answering you, but you're pretending I'm not. But I understand because your position is getting wrecked. Oh, no. Exodus 14, 19 and 20. Then the angel of God, who had been going before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood before them. So it came, it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. And there was the cloud along with the darkness, yet it gave light at night. Thus the one did not come near the other all night. So the angel of God is there. When he moves, the pillar cloud moves, but also who's in the pillar of the cloud? Then the morning watch, Yahweh looked down on the camp of the Egyptians through the pillar of cloud and the cloud and brought the camp of the Egyptians into confusion. So Yahweh and the angel are there. You yeah, when he comes down, he comes down with the angels. Over a minute. Um, it says, now let, I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, Please. verse 12. And Moses is talking, saying, Yahweh spoke to you out of the middle of the fire. Yes. You heard the voice of words, but you saw no form. Mm -hmm. You only heard a voice. A singular voice is who mm -hmm. the children of Israel heard. Deuteronomy 4. How many voices that were speaking? How many voices were speaking to Moses and the children of Israel? Well, according to Deuteronomy 4, 7, that singular voice is the voice of the triune God because Deuteronomy 4, 7 says Yahweh is the gods who come nearby. Let me show you. So you want to, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, here it is. Are you kidding me, bro? Okay. Are we going to resort to kid stuff? Here it is. No, no, Deuteronomy 4. Can I answer the question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Otis, you, you pretend to be nice. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. Deuteronomy 4, 7, for what great, great nation is there that has a God so near? The Hebrew gods that are so near to them as Yahweh our God. Let me show you the Hebrew. Just in case you, you because you know, you 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 like Ethiopia, you like Ethiopian Jews, so you must like Hebrew. <laughs> Let me show you the Hebrew. Hold on, brother. Take it easy, man. Take it easy. So that one God, the voice of the one God is the voice of the Trinity. Here it is. Deuteronomy 4, 7. So I'm glad you're quoting these verses because they're destroying your position here. Elohim, Karobim, Karobim is plural. Gods, they are near. It's masculine plural adjective. Why did you ignore verse seven, my brother? I didn't, my brother. I did, I did. What's the next question? Let me go. I got to put the next question. Wow, Sam. Of course, for the people that are listening, according to that scripture, 
There was only one. A voice means one singular voice. Now, I want to go down to. Um, Are you preaching? Can I adjust that line? Verse 24. Wait, can I adjust that? Wait, wait, don't run. Yeah, uh, this again shows you don't understand how singulars are used in the Hebrew scriptures. Because in the Hebrew Bible, in the Hebrew Bible, singular pronouns, adjectives, participles are used for entire nations of individuals. And they are depicted as speaking as one man here. So your use of the singular shows you don't know the Bible, my brother in humanity. Here, an example. Just to give you an example how singular pronouns, adjectives, participles, nouns are used for multitudes of individuals being described as a collective whole. An example, Second Chronicles 30, verse 12. Okay, the I hand of God, can I answer the question? The brother, hand of God you only have five minutes. And give them one heart. So according to your logic, the entire people of Judah had one heart, so they're one man. Another example, so you don't know the Bible, brother. Oh, okay. Whew. I don't want to know it the way you know it, but anyway. Yeah, well, if you know Deuteronomy, the Bible, you'll be saved. So Deuteronomy 24 says, for Yahweh your God is a devouring fire, a jealous God. Since God is a jealous God, the Father is a jealous God. Yeah. If there's two other persons with him, and that person, those persons are getting more recognition than him. Okay, can I answer you? you imagine the, I haven't even got to the question. No, but could, you're you imagine, could you imagine the mayhem that that'll be inside of the Trinity because everyone's jealous? Okay, so now let me destroy that argument. Now, because you don't know how to interpret Scripture, you pit Scripture against Scripture. The Yahweh, who's a jealous God, is not a singular person. What don't you get? And if we follow your butchering of Scripture and your strawmanning of the Trinity, you got Yahweh contradicting himself. Because in my cross examination, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire here. Zechariah 13, 7, awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man, my associate. So here's a man who is not Yahweh the Father, my associate. We're going to look at the Hebrew lexicon for this. Amithi, the word Amith is always used for someone who is next of kin, who has the same nature, related to you by nature. So now you're butchering a scripture. Yahweh seems to forgot that he's a jealous God. Because he calls this man my companion, my equals. All right, so here it says, my companion, Amithi, Amit, Amithi, an associate fellow relation, relation, whenever it's used, whenever it's used, it always refers to next of kin, a relative, one who's related to you by nature. So when I ask you the question, here's my question to you. How can this man, whom we know is Jesus, because Jesus quotes in Mark 14, 27, who's not the father, because he says, my shepherd, a man, be equal to God the father when he's not the father, but he's a man without him also being more than a man, God in the flesh, distinct from the father, but one with him. Hopefully you'll answer this one. Let's see. I got you, brother. Now, what are you, you're throwing words in there, catchphrases for your fellow Trinitarians, <laughs> and you're saying that he's not equal. If we read scripture. No, I didn't say he's not equal. Dude. No, no, you misrepresent. I didn't say he's not equal. I said he is equal. I, I, I got you. He's, no, he's equal. Not equal. Go, ahead, go ahead. I just want to correct that. Now, I can't answer this fully without going into the old, I'm sorry, into the New Testament. And I'm going to have to do that to, to show you this. Is that okay? All right, well, are you. you going to answer the question? Well, let me ask you to see if you're going to answer. Take it easy, man. Says, to whom, in Isaiah 46, he says, "To whom will you like? To whom will you liken me?" The speaker, God the Father. Yeah, you can wrap it up. This guy's a joke. It's like me and make me equal that we should be alike. So the Father, when he comes into the flesh, now he comes as a man. He has no equal sin. That means that. Right, let me let me ask the question before you read it up. Father himself. So let me repeat what you said so I can understand any question. So, guys, I want you to hear why well, we say these. This is a dumb I'm going to ask you a question, brother. Let me I'm hear. asking you the question so people hear. So, you just said when the father said, My shepherd, the man who is my companion, that man who's his companion is actually the father referring to himself, appearing as a man. So, the father is saying, This is me appearing as a man. So this man is me in a different moment, and he's equal to me. And you don't see why your doctrine is from I'm not modalist, Sam. Don't do that to me. You no. just said it was. You said that's the father coming as a man. You we just got you. You just said it, and it's recorded. Okay. So when Jubilees says that God is speaking, let us make man in our image. Do you actually take that that God is enlisting angelic creatures to create? The angels didn't actually do the creating. He's what only speaking. 
they're just standing there chilling. Oh, okay. So they're just chilling. But so when God says, let us make man in our image and our likeness, you're saying he's just talking to angels who are going to just chill and he's the one doing created. So why is he then talking to them and saying, let us create? Well, that's a question you have to ask God. I actually can't answer that. I'm not trying to come no, out. God has answered the question. You're the one who's deaf to it. So why is he in talking to angels and saying, let us make man in our image if the angels are just chilling and not creating? Well, Sam, you, the, the book of Tobit, I gave you that. Tobit 8.6. I'm going to give this to you again. Tobit 8.6. If you go to the Catholic Bible, you'll see Tobit 8.6. And it says, you made Adam and gave him Eve, his wife, for a helper and support. From them came the seed of men. You said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Let us make him a help meet. Mm -hmm. Tobit is confirming what Jubilee said. You believe okay, in so, the Catholic all right, well, Let's go to Tobit. Hold on. So you're telling go. me in the book of Tobit, one second, mm -hmm. I'm going to get there. Man. You're telling me in the book of Tobit, that citation in verse six, Tobit then confirms angels did create? They not did. the angels are not creating. He just it is right here in front of you. Now, can you show me? Well, here. Look. And Tobias began to pray. See, this shows you why you butcher even Tobit like you did scripture. Let's read it together. Here it is. Let's read it, man. I'm eating my time to read it. Do your homework for you. Wait. Tobias began to pray. Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, and blessed be thy holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens and all the cre thy creatures bless thee. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve his wife. From them the race of mankind is sprung. Thou didst say it is not good that the man should be alone. Let us make a helper for him like himself. And now, O oh Lord, can you show me where it said he was talking to angels? Bingo! I showed that to you in Jubilee's chapter. No, no, wait, 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 wait. I wait. showed that to you. I want to repeat what you said because I want people to catch you in your lie. You just said, everyone heard it's recorded, so I want to catch you in your lie, Otis. This is what you have to do. You said Tobit confirms Jubilees that he's talking to angels. Show me where Tobit 8.6 says that God was talking to angels. What I'm saying is this, that he's referencing Jubilees chapter 3. Verse no, he's not. He's referencing Genesis 1. Let me, let me cook. Come on. Yeah, I'm cooking you. So show me where it says he's talking to angels. I'm about to show you, Sam. Please, go ahead. And Tobit. Chapter 3, verse 4. This is where Tobit gets that from. No, he doesn't. He gets it from Genesis. Show me where he gets it. Okay. He's making the inference from Genesis 126 and Genesis 2. I, take it easy. I know. I know what you're saying. Here it is. You then could. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So I know what you're saying. I'm going to get there. What you're saying. So it's, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So you're assuming that because Tobit quotes Genesis 18, God speaking in the plural, he's getting it from Jubilees? No. All he's doing is paraphrasing Genesis 126 and Genesis 218. So I'm going to ask you again, can you show me in Tobit and you'll win this argument, at least this argument, where Tobit says that let us make a helper that in Tobit he's speaking to the angels. And I'll concede. I'll say, okay, you got me there. Okay, brother. Now, I'm going to use this as an example. Yeah. When Jesus was being taken up, he says, man shall not live by bread alone. When he was talking to say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That comes from Deuteronomy. He quoted the book of Deuteronomy. He made a reference to it. This is what Tobit is doing. In Tobit 8.6, he's making a reference to, to the book of Jubilee. Let me finish. No, Jubilee. To the book of Jubilees, no, chapter 3. Oh, let's move on because you're, you're, you're spinning wheels here. I'm on question for both. How could Tobit be quoting Jubilees if Tobit is older? And why trust Jubilees if it promotes a solar month, but Sirach supports a lunar? Go ahead. Um, how could Tobit be quoting Jubilees? Well, Tobit is not older. Remember, Jubilees is by the angel of his presence giving, giving Moses. So now you have the angel and Moses. I'm quite sure Moses was around well before Tobit came along. We can all agree to that. So it is not Jubilees. Um, Tobit is not older than Jubilees. That is false. And why trust Jubilees? If it promotes the solar month? But Syria, uh, if you read the book of Jubilees, I want you to read it. Preston, SoCal, 
Go and read the book. Don't give your opinion on it like Sam is doing. Sam said some of it, but he didn't read all of it. So Sam is not an authority to tell you what scripture or not. So if we want to be correct, go to the Ethiopian canon of the Bible, namely Beta Israel, and you'll get the truth. Now notice the very Isaiah 19 passage talks about Ethiopia, talks about Assyria. Isaiah 19, 23 to 25. It says, Egypt, my people, Assyria, my, the work of my hand, Israel, my inheritance. So it's not just Ethiopia that's special. Egypt is said to be special. Assyria, my people, not yours, my people, as well as Israel. So if I follow this logic, how he butchers the scripture, then that means you should go to the Assyrians to see what the canon is. And you can go to the Israelis to see what the canon is. But the Assyrians who are Christians don't accept Jubilees. And then on top of that, he wants you to go to a particular group of Ethiopians. But I think he forgot he's a Christian. So he's going to now betray the New Testament and Jesus whom he claims to worship, even though it's a false Jesus. And he wants you to go to a particular group of Ethiopians who are Israelites. But what about the Ethiopian Orthodox Church that has nothing to do with the Romans? In their canon, they have Enoch. In their canon, they have the Didascalia. So now I'm going to use his criterion to bury his fake doctrine, his fake God. Go to the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Go to the Ethiopian Bible. Read Enoch. They're the son of man was there before creation. He's uncreated. He's not God the Father. He's hidden with God the Father on the throne. He'll appear in the latter days, sitting on a throne of glory. He'll be worshipped as the Son of Man Messiah, who's not God the Father, two divine persons, bearing his fake God, his fake doctrine. So yes, go to the Ethiopians. But go to the Christians, because this, I want to be nice. I was going to call him a heretic. He is, but I'll be nice. Forgot he's a Christian. He forgot that he follows Jesus. He forgot that Jesus said he will take the kingdom from Israel, give it to a nation that bears its fruit. And 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10 tells us that's a church. But he will butcher the New Testament and contradict Jesus' words to prop up a false book that contradicts the Bible because that's what heretics do. The truth buries their demonic doctrines. 